Hey everyone, Tankenstein here. In this video, I'll be briefly going over the major additions coming to War Thunder in the upcoming update, Danger Zone. I'll be doing the most major things primarily in this video, so if I miss anything at all, let me know in the comments below. That said, of course, subscriptions are awesome, but either way, let's get into the video. And so I'll organize this video in terms of air, ground, naval, and then the other features that will be coming in this update. So to start, let's get into aircraft first. Of course, we all know the F-14A early is coming to War Thunder in Danger Zone, as this is the thing that Gaijin is showing off more than anything else, being especially the star of its trailer. It also comes with the game's first active radar missiles, with the AIM-54A Phoenix missiles, which is another new addition to War Thunder, as well as the first radar that can track numerous targets at once in the F-14's AN-AWG-9 radar. Unfortunately, that's all that has been definitively thus far shown for the American air tech trait. Next, to Germany. We have the Ju-87 R2 Libya Stuka, coming as a premium rank 1 aircraft. War Thunder seems to be going back to offering copy-paste premiums that have either unique names or skins on them, with the Stuka being just one of the examples of this practice coming in this update. That's all for the German Air Forces, however, again in this coming update. Next, we have the Russian aircraft, and the only Russian aircraft that we've seen shown off in the dev server or on blogs will be the Su-17M4, and that is a Russian 11.0 BR strike aircraft that currently carries the Kh-29T guided missiles, but really is pretty similar Similar to the squadron vehicle SU-17M3 already in game, again except for those KH-29T missiles and perhaps a few other smaller additions. Now, per the dev server and dev blogs, we are not receiving any British aircraft with this update. We are also not seeing any Japanese, Chinese, Italian, Swedish, and Israeli planes in this update either. Bear in mind that every single vehicle and feature that will be coming to War Thunder and that I'm mentioning in this video appeared either in the dev server or in dev blogs. So, if it does come in the newest update and does not appear in this video, that's why I'm only picking from official sources. Now, that said, for France, we are seeing the Milan come to game. This is a premium pack plane that sits at 9.7 BR and is ranked 6 and only has AIM 9Bs, at least as of right now. I've actually got gameplay out on this plane and am not a big fan of it from what I've seen at least. Unfortunately, that's all that we're getting for aircraft again, at least from official sources. Now for tanks, it appears as though we're getting far more in danger zone. For the US, we're getting the M1A1 AIM, which is a 10.7 BR rank 7 squadron vehicle that has the powerful KEW APF SDS shell. And it's also an Australian vehicle, so I guess Aussies rejoice. Next for Germany, we're getting the premium Leopard 2A4 Panzer Battalion. 123, which is a 10.0 BR rank 6 tank. This is an exact copy of the Leopard 2A4, except that it has a camo net skin that comes standard with the tank, and it does not feature a dozer blade like the standard Tech Tree 2A4 does, at least from what I've seen when I played with it on the dev server. Next, for Russia, we're getting the BTR ZD, which is a 4.3 BR rank 4 SPAA that looks like it will be very, very powerful. I'm actually pretty excited for this one. Pretty low rank, and it's pretty modern. Now, for Great Britain, we're actually getting a few tanks. First, we're getting the G6, which is a South African tank destroyer that sits at 7.0 BR and is rank 4. This TD features a powerful 155mm cannon that can fire HE smoke and anti-air HE shells. Great Britain is also receiving the Challenger DS, which is essentially a premium Challenger Mark II, even though the dev server had this listed as a Mark III. I basically call it a Mark II as it has the same exact modifications and weight, as well as armor as the Mark II as opposed to the Mark III that features a stronger APF SDS shell, as well as a few other small changes. Japan is receiving the M36B2, which is pretty much an M36 American tank destroyer with a partial roof on top. China is receiving its new top tank in game for the ZTZ-99A, of which features stronger armor and, if I'm not mistaken, a better engine compared to lower BR Chinese MBTs, as well as the DCT-10-125 APF SDS shell, which is now the top Chinese tank shell in game. Now, Italy is receiving a few vehicles, are actually receiving almost more vehicles than anyone else outside of Israel believe it or not. Israel is receiving the L640 31st Regiment Premium BR 1.0 tank, which is a rank 1 tank. This is, like the new Premium Stuka, a copy-paste premium with a special regiment stuck on top of it, so you can spend real money on it. Italy is also receiving the Lancia 3 row. 
of which is 1.7 BR and is rank 1 and features a 100mm meme cannon stuck to the back of a truck. Italy is also receiving the BBC PT2. This is a rank 6 8.7 BR light tank with a 25mm autocannon that fires APF SDS. Kind of reminds me a bit of the Dardo except a little bit worse. France is receiving the Mephisto ATGM carrier of which is rank 6 and sits at 8.3 BR, can fire both hot and hot 2 ATGMs. Sweden is receiving the PVKV3 which is a 57mm cannon armed tank destroyer that sits at 2.7 BR and and is ranked 2. This is pretty much like the PVKV3, but with a smaller cannon and a faster reload. Now, interestingly, as mentioned kind of before, Israel is receiving four tanks in this coming update, with two of them being premiums and the other two being regular tech tree vehicles. The premiums were already in game in other tech trees, so that's not really all too new. The other vehicles are pretty darn cool. Now, first, they're receiving the Tehran 4, which is pretty much a T-54 tank and will be 7.7 BR and rank 5. Next, Israel is receiving the premium Magok 3, which is a rank 5 7.7 VR tank that features a powerful ERA armor package on the front of the vehicle. Next, we have the premium Shotkal Delet, which is a rank 6 8.3 BR Centurion modification with the Israeli 105mm Sharir cannon, tons of smoke grenade launchers, and extra ERA protection. Finally, Israel is receiving the Merkava Mark 3B or Merkava, just tell me if I'm wrong, which is a 10.0 BR rank 6 MBT that features a much upgraded engine and 120mm cannon over the Mark IId. Now for naval, we're only receiving a few vehicles as typical, but they are still very cool and some of them are extremely famous which is awesome because we are starting to get into that block of ships at this point where most of them are going to be very famous as they are World War II destroyers, battleships, battle cruisers, what have you. First, we are receiving the awesome USS gearing for the US, which of course USS is for the US, duh. This is a rank 3 4.7 BR destroyer, again for the US. Next, for Germany, we're receiving the SMS Bayern, which is a rank 5 6.7 BR battleship with massive 38 centimeter cannons and actually has a pretty decent reload rate. I had the chance of test driving this in the dev server and it was awesome. Russia's receiving the Kronstadt, which is a rank 5 6.7 BR battlecruiser that weighs 41,540 tons, which I think is taking over as the largest ship in War under by actually quite a bit. The thing is, the Kronstadt was actually never created. It was partially made, if I'm not mistaken, but they just never saw it through to completion. So this is almost kind of like a paper design, oddly enough, but it is what it is. Great Britain is receiving the mighty HMS Hood, which is a 6.7 BR rank 5 battlecruiser, as well as the ML-1383, which is a wooden boat with cannons attached. So Pretty cool, I guess, but it's only 1.3 BR, if I'm not mistaken. Japan is receiving a coastal vessel, the JDS Ayaname, which is a rank 5 4.0 BR frigate, which is pretty cool. It's a new top BR coastal vehicle, so that's pretty cool for Japan. And Italy is receiving a premium rank 2 4.3 BR destroyer, the Genier. Now, this thing has absolutely horrible torpedoes that, in my own testing, can hardly damage other destroyers, as they only have 54 kilograms of explosive filler equivalent, which is, if I'm not mistaken, the worst in game. Now, some other people have speculated that France is going to be receiving a naval tech tree, but nothing has been substantiated as of the writing of this video. Further, obviously, Israel and Sweden do not have naval forces in War Thunder, nor does China. Now, for other interesting features, we are seeing the addition of two new maps, which are Abandoned Town and Southeastern City, as well as an updated Sun City map in which they're going to be adding some doodads around the streets to make it seem like a more live city or that people were more recently there. We're also seeing the addition of the Israeli helicopter tech tree, starting with the regular tech tree AH-1G, AH-1Q, and AH-1F Cobras, as well as the MD-500 tow and the premium Peten, which was already in game again as a premium. There is also talk of a Hungarian sub tech tree coming to War Thunder with Italy, which would be awesome. This would make sense as they just removed the OF-40 as a premium pack vehicle for Italy, but we'll see that said, uh, before the 
last thing in this video there is also talk of a hidden premium or actually several hidden premiums but i'm not sure what it is apparently this has been confirmed by someone who works at gaijin in the forums but he did not go into specifics so maybe someone can shine a light on it in the comments below this could also mean that italy is getting a new top tier or near top tier well relatively top tier premium pack vehicle from hungary if the previous rumor is true now that said finally to cap this video we're also seeing napalm being added to war thunder with many higher br aircraft such as the f-105d and mig-27 being able to use it as anti-ground ordnance per gaijin and also in my own testing it won't be very effective against most ground units outside of open top tank destroyers or possibly very lightly armored vehicles but it will act as a zone denial method until it flames out so some coincidental news right as i was about to render this video and complete it some news came out from war thunder via a devlog we are getting the Z-19E, which is going to be the first helicopter in the Chinese helicopter tech tree. So this will be a rank six premium and uh, will feature some really awesome, at least that's how they're describing it, TY-90 missiles with all aspect seekers. And these are air-to-air -air missiles and a launch distance of up to six kilometers or up to nine or uh, rather eight BA-9 ATGMs with a launch range of up to six kilometers. So this is a pretty interesting thing. We are seeing two tech trees basically come into this uh into this update with the chinese helicopter and israeli helicopter tech trees so this is very very interesting and as more and more tech trees are coming into the game we can expect fewer and fewer huge additions to single tech trees and rather maybe one or two vehicles for this or that tech tree with each update and that's about it and that's if any vehicles even come to a particular tech tree i mean there's some tech trees that might be totally forgotten about i mean nations entirely like Japan or Italy or France in the future. So you never know. I mean, I feel like with all these additional tech trees and then sub tech trees and all that, we might see a lot of negligence going on towards specific tech trees in this game. Certainly we are no longer in the era where we get like five or 10 American tanks or five or 10 just American vehicles altogether, unless it's specifically an American patch. We are now getting one, two, maybe three or four vehicles for a particular tech tree. And that's pretty much it, you know, and I think that's pretty much how Gaijin wanted it all along because of course that makes it easier for them in many ways because no longer do they have to pilfer from the same mine of vehicles. But either way, thanks so much for watching. Please, of course, like, comment, subscribe. You guys know the dealio. It would mean the world to me for any subscription. So please spare me a sub. But either way, again, thank you so much. And I'll see you all on the other side. Take care, everyone.